I want to address Governor Walz's recent announcement that he's pursuing a 100% renewable energy mandate for Minnesota. I'm a lawmaker who embraces good science and reason, and unlike many of my colleagues across the aisle, when it comes to renewable and green energy, I am not a science denier. Last month, many national and state Democrats promoted legislation requiring 100% renewable energy production. Now, I support all energy sources when appropriate, but the use of solar, wind, and other alternative energy sources have an important supply chain that is being ignored in this debate. The true science of green energy is being denied. Over the last decade, due to many state mandates for renewable energy, solar panel manufacturing moved from first to third world countries where manufacturers operate under like lower environmental and labor standards. For every acre of community solar garden here in Minnesota, uh, a ton of toxic sili uh, uh, silicon tetrachloride is dumped outside of a third world city. The latest solar technology uses a heavy metal called cadmium, which is a carcinogen and a genotoxin, meaning it can cause inheritable mutations affecting children. Environmentalists must stop denying the existence of this dangerous process used to make and dispose of solar energy. When an industrial solar array's 20-year lifespan ends, these panels are just whisked overseas to an environmentally lax and underdeveloped country for crushing and disposal. Now, wind turbines, they require a great deal of mined iron, copper, oil, silica, and a, 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 a magnet called a neodymium. Most wind turbine blades are made of glass-reinforced plastic, GRP, which is susceptible to breaking in cold weather uh, and in high winds. And they also have a short lifespan and virtually no useful byproduct if they could be recycled. When, they, when these turbines sit idle in cold weather, like during our recent polar vortex, two megawatts of energy is used to heat the oil in the gearboxes in just Minnesota's wind turbines. Now, people may think that lithium-ion batteries in their electric cars create a low-carbon and environmentally sound footprint, but not in underdeveloped countries. The average electric car battery contains 30 pounds of lithium, plus other important minerals like cobalt and nickel and graphite. The half million gallons of water that it takes to refine one ton of lithium takes more than a year to evaporate from holding ponds and leaves behind a toxic mess. Cobalt mines in the Congo currently employ about 400,000 children. And in China, some of the graphite is mined in slave-like conditions. In addition, both electric car motors and wind turbines use a large amount of a rare earth magnet called neodymium. And this is mined in China, and it's created this toxic lake in the city of Batao. So those who oppose nickel mining cite the industry's spotty environmental track record. Yet these same people deny science when they promote the mining of nickel by buying hybrids or electric vehicles or Tesla's home battery system called Powerwall. If we truly want a clean environment for our children, we, must first, we first need to accept the reality and stop denying the science of green energy and its, and its terrible supply chain. Minnesota could be a national leader by improving the renewable energy supply chain, but first we must empower businesses to develop responsible mining, manufacturing, energy production, and recycling strategies. In doing so, we could create thousands of jobs in Polymet's northern Minnesota copper nickel mine. We could employ thousands of workers in southern Minnesota manufacturing plants. And we could empower businesses to create a safe new disposal process for recycling these blades, the batteries, and solar products. But we also need to accept a portfolio of all energy resources, including carbon-free, load-based power, such as nuclear. Minnesota's existing nuclear power production